Hi everyone, uh, this is Howley here. Uh, thank Vương for for the great detailed talks and uh, also for the introdu introduction. Um, and so um, I will start um, the series today um, with more um, uh, like uh, more details about. Um, neural machine reasoning from the application perspective, um, unlike the other talk that we we have gone through, just focus more on uh, theory and uh, also the um, fundamental of um, neural machine reasoning. So, um, in the scope of this talk, I will use question answering as a standardized test for machine reasoning. Uh, by the way. Uh, can you all hear me well? Yep. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right. Um. So. So what a question answering uh, task? It's it is a like compute computer um, system, um that can automatically answer um your natural question, um, a uh, question by knowledge by human. Um. So any type of um, modalities that can be used to express um, uh, knowledge uh, by humans can be used in uh, question answering. It's not limited to only text or um, or images. Um, and one note is that uh, question answering is not just simple search and retrieve problem. Let's say we have a visual question answering here, uh, example in this in in this slide. Um, um, we have the question: like, What affects her mobility? Um, um, you have this seen this in the previous um, lecture uh, by v v Dr. Vương Lê. Um, and you see, to be able to answer this kind of question, um, like machine have to detect all the uh, objects first. They have to um, detect the the woman in in the picture and also um, analyze her surrounding. Um, to to see a microwave and because the microwave opens, so it it block her from moving forward. So that sort of reasoning, um, machine have to have to be able to uh, answer this kind of question. And um, some information is um not even available for for um in the image itself. Um, so what kind of information, what kind of knowledge that can, um can be used to support the reasoning process uh, for machine to arrive at a correct answer um, is something we will discover in in um, this lecture uh, in this lecture and um, an uh, obvious question is why question answering um so the answer is that, like our our cell human beings we all learn by answering question we learn by uh, question answering uh, for the entire flight to get to learn new knowledge, and um, that that resemble um, the learning process by human, and also another um, reason that why question answering is important and why it's it's um, it common in um, in machine learning and artificial intelligence is that question answering can be used to formulate other tasks. Let's say um, the other tasks in computer reason, uh, for example. Um, object recognition can be uh, explained in question answering form as a question what is present in the image or um, even action recognition tasks in um, in videos uh, can be translated to question answering problem as what action has the perform the person in the video perform so this sort of this this all sort of um, question, um, is very flexible and it can be used to adapt to many different tasks in machine learning and uh, especially computer vision in, in particular. And um, you have seen all this in um, this slide before uh, by uh, Dr. Vu Le. Uh, he was saying that okay, we can formulate the um, learning to reason uh, framework in the question answering form. Um, so so the input for for learning to reason framework is a not is knowledge context C uh, and a query Q. Uh, in the context of question answering form, the context C can be anything um, from um, from structure 
um, knowledge graph and also from other form of unstructured uh, knowledge representation. Let's say um, we have a text passes, we have uh, images, we have styles, we have videos, and all sort of thing can be can be used as context for question answering. And um, in the scope of this talk, we're dealing um, with all of these type, different type of um, uh, knowledge forms uh, from a text passes to uh, visual uh, image and um, to be to to more complex um, form of uh, knowledge representation in videos and even in a long movie. And um, the output for for learning to reason in um, VQI uh, in v, in question answering form is um, you try to produce an answer that satisfies in, um, um, uh, that 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 relevant to the question and uh, available in the context C. Um, so as uh, Dr. Wun Lee already explained that why this is not just a simple optimization problem like any other recognition task or detection or even translation. Uh, it due to the flexibility um, by itself, by, by nature from the question um, and the, the context. And the answer is more complex than uh, any other uh, optimi optimization problem that we, we have deal with so far. Um, so um, I'm giving a very general architecture for, for the general question answering where I don't specify any specific type of um, the context. Um, so the query here um, as a question. Um, so it, it will be provided in natural language um, form. Um, and um, for that, we will need um, some something like a question representation um, to represent, to num numericalize um, human natural language into the riddle form for, for machine to be able to process. And also we need to do the same thing for the context. We need to, you know, represent the context, the knowledge in the context in a readable form for, for machine. And then at the reasoning part, um, machine have to do uh, some sort of context question interaction to reason about the um, necessary cues um, that can be used uh, to to produce the to um you know to come up with with um the answer um so so this is very general architecture um and um in the following lectures we will uh, go through a different morality to represent the context in the um the learning to reason uh, framework that we have just described um so for for the next um. Uh, uh, lecture, I will mainly talk about the uh, text-based question answering, uh, which also known as uh, neural machine reading comprehension. So in the scope of this talk, I only uh, talk about the neural-based uh, methods instead of um, um, talking about like uh, the early methods, early days method of, of um, machine reading, um, which um, normally based on uh, simple representation. Uh, in in the past and in the lecture eight, I will talk about uh, visual question answering. Um, and in the following uh, lecture, I will talk about um, video question answering. Um, the other lecture of um, application part already covered by um, by my colleagues uh, Hun Lee um, previously. All right. Um, so for the uh, question answering um, task. Um, so the task is given a, given the context information in in the form of a text uh, passage and um, a question. So machine task is to you know predict the the span um, that contains the correct answer. Which in this particular example, it is charging the student tuition. So for for example, in uh, in this in this case, machine have to do a bit of reasoning. Um, to collect different pieces of information from like multiple sentences in the text passage, and and also it have to understand the current current information um conveys in the question and also the mutual information in the text passage, um to be able to identify um the the span of text um in the text passage for the answer, 
Um, and um, this example is taken from um, Squat dataset, which is one of the most common dataset in the um, machine reading comprehension field. Um, uh, this is a relatively large dataset of um, over 150,000 samples, um, which is um, which one of the datasets that make neural machine reading comprehension possible. Um, other other dataset before this um, this dataset is relatively small and um, it it have couple of problems with the data hungry deep learning um, methods. Um, and this is one of the really breakthrough in the field. All right, um, there are also other tasks in the machine reading comprehension. Um, I can list here some of the common tasks as close uh, in which uh, given a, pa a text passage and also an incomplete, uh, incomplete uh, sentence in the question. Uh, machine uh, is required to you know fill the missing piece of information in the in the question. Uh, let's say in 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 um, this particular example given in this slide, we we have the incomplete um, question uh, to fill the missing uh, words, the missing piece of information in the uh, com uh, the incomplete uh, recipe um, ingredient uh, blank uh, phrase enjoy. And then we have to uh, choose among the answer candidates, um, which is cereal, milk, ice cream, uh, ingredients, pouring, and oven. So machine is required to 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 get C as a, the correct answer. Um, and for the other types of, of um, question answering, which mimics the um, human um, question answer um, tests. Um, that is explain that is ex expressed in um, you know multiple choice form and uh, also auto open ended uh, form. So for the multi multiple choice form, um, you given uh, also a passage and a, a question and uh, question candidates um, machine need to pick one of one or multiple answer from the the answer candidates as as a final answer. And for the open end, there are no answer candidate to, to pick. Machine have to, you know, um, like collect all the um, necessary piece of information and then come up with an answer, um, uh, an arbitrary form of answer, uh, which is relatively hard uh, for the, the entire field. Um, so, um, and it's it not even hard in terms of modeling, it's hard in terms of evaluation as well. Um, so that is all sort of the um, form of question answering that we're dealing in the field of um, machine reading comprehension. And here's a general framework for machine reading comprehension test. Um, so as I mentioned before, um, we need to have a sort of um, a, a, like query representation and contact representation in in the text form, um, in machine reading comprehension, um, the two modalities is um, is represented first by the words embedding, and then um, they use some sort of you know um, recurrent neural network, which is um, sequential modeling feature for feature extraction, and then um, some like internal uh, reasoning part. Where it models the interaction between context and and question uh, um, elements, and um, uh, finally from the information gathered in the internal reasoning process, uh, it come up with an answer decoder to produce the answer for um, to produce the final answer. So first for the words representation. So before deep learning era area um simple simplex representation of concept um that human intuitive um but it's actually not scalable and um computationally uh, friendly um so um the solution is to use the continu continuous representation of vector to you know represent words and um the the requirement here is like um when you represent words in the vector space it still it have to uh, preserve the semantics of, of the words. Let's say, um, oh, sorry, it's a bit uh, 
uh, blur um, in this image. So uh, basically, in in the vector space, let's say we have the word man and the word woman, um, they have to be very cl um, close to to each other instead of like a word man and a word tree, uh, let's say. And um, uh, for other for the other uh, form of of words, let's say verb tense, uh, the word walk walking and walked. Uh, should be very close to each other in the in, in the vector space. Um, so uh, the the representation um, of words will be the key to you know um, to transfer the the knowledge uh, explained in the words itself to the way that machine can can process. Um, so uh, there's a a huge deal of work that has been invested in words representation to trans to um to represent words in the vector space uh, has been done in in the in the last decade um, from um from like like before a uh, transformer to um transformer based in but I will explain uh, all of those in 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 later um of this lecture and then um another thing is the word uh, representation that we've seen before in the vector space it's it's fixed and it's um it independent of the context of the word appear in uh, in a sentence but the problem is um uh when it it appear in a sentence uh, the words representation should vary depending on the context let's say um in this example we have a sentence the man moves towards the women um, the second one is the man approaches the women, and the last one, the man, uh, the man runs away from the women. So the first two um, sentence sentences, the word the the word the man should the representation of the word the man should be relatively similar, um, not uh, not to say that they should be identical um, if a um, machine model the the sentence correctly, and the last one as the meaning of the the word the man is like um totally opposite to the 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 man in the first two cases, uh, the representation of of the man should be different, um to reflect the you know the um meaning of run away instead of move towards and approach, so um. So to be able to do this, um, people use different type of um, neural architecture to model the uh, context dependence embedding of words instead of directly use context independent embeddings. Um, the first one is uh, to use recurrent neural network, um, which we have a common variance as LSTM and GIU, which people normally use in practice. Um, so the idea is uh, to to represent a word um, by taking input of um, the the context independent embedding of itself and the uh, previous uh, representation um, of of like from the surrounding uh, words in the the sentence to represent the current words. So um, the advantage of using recurrent neural network it it is good for like short text or sentences, and it's it's very robust in practice. Um, in fact, before two thousand eighteen, it's it's become like a dominant method uh, for you know um, sequential modeling, uh, but it's also have disadvantages um, as it's very slow and computationally cost costly. And another problem is because it's sequential, it it's uh, completely sequential, um, so it cannot be parallelized, um, and also it's it's not good for for very long sequences sequences, um, because the um, vanishing problem, the gradient vanishing uh, problem during training, um, which has been addressed by many uh, different um, uh, works in in. Uh, neural in recurrent neural networks, uh, and let's say LSTM and GIE is, is invented to, you know, to address the problem of uh, gradient vanishing in 
uh, vanilla um, recurrent neural network. Um, I would not go deep into details uh, in, in, in this talk, um, but just to aware that um, uh, there's such a thing. And another alternative way to, you know, to model the um, the context dependent represent uh, the context dependent uh, embedding of words it use cell attention layer so basically um, it's um, it's word is also represent the rep the representation of uh, its word also depends on the representation of all the surrounding mm -hmm. words in a given sentence um, but the point is it doesn't have to strictly go from left to right or right to left in as in a recurrent neural network. Um, the way it do is to, you know, calculate k different attention weights um, for its input to, you know, to calculate a um, summation information uh, for for the word based on um, the surrounding words. And um, the final contextual um, word representation is obtained by the info by a um, non-linear um, fusion of all the um, weighted sum from um, the attention, the cell attention uh, mechanism. And um, using cell attention layers have certain advantages um, in the sense that it's good at capturing, you know, long, long ring dependency in the, in the uh, sentence much better than sequential modeling using uh, let's say recurrent neural network, and also it can capture co-reference -re chains. Um, let's take the example here uh, as um, uh, let's analyze the example provided here. So um, there are a lot of in in um, in a text passes and along text passes, um, like cross sentences. Um, what is like let's say in this case, animal is is refer it's in the next sentence, and LSTM um and other type of recurrent neural network struggle to model the relation the co occurrence, the co reference uh, between animal and it, but um cell attention uh, layer um has that advantage and um empirically people show that uh it, it show a strong capability in in. Um, capturing the co-reference chains and also uh, because it's not strictly sequential as um, recurrent neural network it's parallelizable and it's uh, fast it's um, it's friendly in terms of computation and um, that's why uh, cell attention can deal with a massive amount of data um, which lead to many uh, pre-chain models later on uh, in the NLP field um, but it also has certain that, uh, disadvantages as, um, you know, uh, self attention and attention in general are memory intensive. And also, um, it, it needs a very careful setting for, you know, hyperparameter tuning. So that is some uh, disadvantage of uh, using uh, self attention layer of a recurrent neural network. And for um, reasoning approach in uh, machine reading comprehension, in which we model the interaction between the question um, and the context, um, there are two different, uh, there are two main approach in machine reading comprehension. First, it you attention based encoder to represent the you know the interaction between uh, the context and the query. And also there is another um, type of work that uh, currently uh, trendy for machine reading comprehension and in NLP field in general. It to, you know, uh, pre-train a transformer based model with a large um, text corpus uh, by as a trick, by some uh, unsupervised tricks, uh, let's say masking or uh, predict uh, two sentences next to each other. Uh, and later, it's, it transfers the knowledge learned by the unsupervised uh, pre-trained model to the um, QA um, encoder um, to uh, to uh, take advantage of pre-trained on a large corporate data. And there are also other 
uh, approach in machine reading comprehension, uh, including like memory base, as um, my colleagues currently presented in uh, in uh, lecture three. Um, but um, but in the scope of in the scope of this talk, I will just um, you know mention about the uh, attention base encoder and also the um, pre-trained model uh, for question answer in this talk uh, due to time constraint. All right. Um, so here's one of the typical work the attention attention based model for um, machine reading comprehension. Um, my colleague. Uh, Dr. Bunge, he's already explained, you know, the bi-directional attention in the previous lecture. So basically, what it does here to um, to learn the similarity in in terms of information contained in in the context and the query um, to you know to refine the the representation of the words in context and words in query. Uh, to co to you know to collect the um, necessary key uh, for 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 prediction for answer prediction uh, and for the pre training model uh, using transformer based so bird is one of the um, most successful model in in the slide work um, but offer a way to you know accommodate huge amount of text data as I mentioned before. Um, it is trained in unsupervised manner where you know it tries to predict its own mass paths. For example, it tries to reconstruct the mass of words based, based on the information of surrounding word in um, in the provided uh, corpus and it theoretically provide like pr prove that um, like uh, the pseudo likelihood uh, approximation in birds is um, equivalent to maximizing um, the conditional likelihood of some variable given the rest. And when given an, a large number of variable, um, this is this converts to a maximum likelihood estimate, and it's basically um, the the likelihood estimated uh, distribution will represent. Um, the distribution of the the, the words uh, in the corpus, and uh, for the fine tuning part for machine reading comprehension, um, so it will reuse uh, the the embedding of words uh, in question and paragraph, um, and and try to learn the decoder to predict the start and the end of the span. Uh, for the answer, and um, its empirical research show that um, it's outperform all the uh, like more traditional um, neural approach in machine reading comprehension, and uh, but based uh, models um, is still current um, the state of the art of, of machine reading comprehension. Um, here is a the last uh, slide for the machine reading comprehension. I will uh, I will stop for a second if you guys have any question or any discussion uh, you want to ask uh, before I move to a uh, visual question answering. All right. Um, if not, then I will move to the second part of my lecture, which is visual question answering. So, um, you know, my colleague Vương Lê, um, he's already covered a significant part of the visual question answering. But in this talk, I will give you uh, more details from like application and computer vision uh, point of views instead of going from like set set interaction and also um, graph learning. Um, so recall the learning to reason formulation uh, where now the context C is given uh, by an image and um, the query is still natural language question and the answer um, the answer is expressed in in terms of natural language um, question um, why 
visual question answer is an um, AI testbed. So if you look at this figure on the right, you see the VQA is it it is at the intersection of multiple um, uh, few in in the AI field, um, including computer vision, natural language processing, reasoning, and and machine learning, and that makes it a very exciting, um, very fascinating uh, field to to deal with. And if you look at the example on the left, um, given a question, sorry, I mean, given an image um, like this, and the question is, what can be the red object on the ground be useful? And the answer, as human being, we able to understand that explicitly that a fire hydrant can be used for for fighting fires but for machine the knowledge is not presented in the image and that's why it it requires the access of additional support fact to be able to go uh, to be able to arrive at the answer of firefighting here so the visual question answering and later I will explain the video question answering um, easily to to in, incorporate um, additional information uh, and even common sense knowledge um, into the test that um, that would be a good test bed for from to you know to assess if machine really understand what happening uh, what presented in in the visual scenes uh, including both synthetic scenes in images and dynamic scenes in videos and movie. Um, later, I will explain in more detail how people manage to 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 have access to all this knowledge to be uh, to able to answer this sort of questions. And um, yeah, why why um, VQA is that important, and what kind of knowledge um, that it need to answer different type of question because like human question human natural language is very flexible in case in terms of uh, expression in terms of um, different angle of knowledge that we want to to know so um, there are different type of you know different level of knowledge that require to to answer different type of question let's say for uh, for question about scene element or some something that only required recognition um, the knowledge required for that type of question is just um, knowledge from shape from qualitative spatial reasoning um, but for let's say if in a video a dynamic scene uh, visual scene um, the knowledge might be a lot more like it's not only um, shape of objects not only spatial uh, information uh, in in a visual scene at a time is required but also the relation between objects through time also required for answer uh, questions and um, it's a, the hardest level of reasoning um, like a question might requires common sense knowledge and reasoning a relation between objects through time and from or from different like different part in time and space to be able to understand the holistic view of, of, of a scene to be able to you know um, uh, arrive at an answer and here are some application of VQA that um, people use in practice uh, the first one um, I should mention here is um, visual question answering is able to aid visually impaired user. So basically, it will um, communicate with user. It it will it will replace human eyes, um, basically, and communicate with human uh, via natural language processing, um, by uh, human natural language. Um, that's why um, visual question answering is so important in practice. And another application of, of VK can be. You know, it's it's you in surveillance and visual data summarization. Uh, let's say you have a whole bunch of uh, surveillance data, and um, somehow you want to you know access to a a certain part, a certain period in the the video without um, 
having to go uh, to the whole video. Um, so visual, visual question answering will give you a solution to automatically assess the, um, the uh, necessary piece of information in um, the massive amount of data um, and it will save a lot of human labor costs. All right. So, uh, well, there are different question types similar to the uh, machine reading comprehension I, I, I mentioned in the lecture seven. Um, there are different types of question um, can be used to address um, you know, machine understanding about a visual scene. Um, well, the most common one is open-ended questions um, in which if you ask machine to um, give a arbitrary answer for, for question. Um, another one is multiple choice similar to the uh, question answering form that I was talking in the previous lecture. And another one is counting. Uh, but it's not only counts uh, in spatial uh, space, but also um, in uh, later later in um, in video question answering, uh, machine also have to count the number of actions uh, in the dynamic scene, which is relatively challenging. It's really challenging um, for even human to do, uh, let alone machine have to carry this kind of reasoning task. Um, and in terms of data set, um, uh, due to the challenging of the task itself, there are different um, data set has been, uh, you know, introduced in the last couple of years. Uh, the first one is back in 2015, where VQA, the first version of uh, VQA data set has been introduced. Um, it's mostly uh, address the perception uh, capability of machine in understand um, what present what objects present in the image, and also um, some more challenging tasks is counting spatially, uh, where it asks machine to count how many objects in a given scene, or um, like in this in 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 this example, how many um, pieces of pizza is is there in the image, and later people care more about reasoning relational reasoning capability of machine uh, where um, a the last data set is proposed uh, which is named GQA um, so it will address the 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 machine understanding about the relation of objects um, in an image and resemble the compositional um, understanding of visual scene of, of human um, and in in particular uh, for the uh, relational reasoning uh, for com compositional understanding, uh, there's a um, dominant data set, um, which is a synthetic one, but very important to like you know it's it's very challenging in the sense that it's um, the question and the visual scene is just so complex. Um, and it's very hard for even human being to to be able to solve the problem. Um, my so in the previous lecture we already seen this. I will explain why we need um, sort of multi-step reasoning um, to be able to answer this kind of question, uh, given this kind of uh, clean visual sense uh, later in this lecture. Um, so in the first lecture, Professor Chun Chan how he mentioned the dual view system for um, machine learning. So in the context of visual question answering, um, the dual view system can be think of as the first system, uh, which which is intuitive, um, and it's mostly you know the the deep learning um, framework for pattern recognition that we. Uh, you, you we could testly use uh, now today. Um, for example, for visual for the visual part, it is CNN, two D CNN, or in um in vid in video, it is three D and um and for the the um linguistic part, it's it cloth representation uh, for words and uh, birds representation for words and sentences. Why the the so system two is more about analytical, where it's it care about the uh, the deliberatively 
um, a reasoning process for cross modality interaction. So um, how the in the the facts the fact given in the system one interact with each other, um, and also um, the two system ideally they should uh, interact with each other in the sense that uh, from the knowledge from the interaction between um, between facts uh, that analyze in the system two uh, will affect the representation of of the um, the fact itself. So um, this is the ideal um, framework that we, we have in visual question answering. And um, multiple works have been tried to address um, this kind of framework. Um, so the first one is um, we previously discussed about the attention by uh, visual question answering method. Um, so basically uh, what they do is given a query queue and uh, context C, um, we use attention to mask the importance of um, different parts in the context um, that relevant to the question um, and and necessary to answer to answer the question. Um, uh, so, so there are different um, options for for uh, learning the attention weights. Um, Basically, um, what we do is we learn the joy representation of the query and it's part of the, the context uh, to rank their, um, their similarity, the mutual information between them. Um, and later we you know summarize all the, the, the important part in the context um, into a vector and this vector is you to you know decode the, um, the answer for the query. And um, yeah, uh, my colleagues already mentioned um, the this work bottom up top down attention um, in the previous uh, section. So I, I will skip um, these uh, models and spend more time on the current chance of you know um, visual question answering. Um, for all right for the bi-directional attention um, previously uh, my in in the uh, question the textual question answering. Um, we also have bi-directional attention um, where we extract the information um, from the query to context and from the context to query. So in visual question answering we also have a similar procedure to, to do that. So the idea is to you know to extract the um, the attention weights of each modality condition on the other modality to refine the information the representation of 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 that modality and by doing the the representation refinement uh, iteratively um, when the network converts we will have a set of visual feature that reflect the information required in the the um the question and also we will have the information um of i mean we also have the worst representation that reflect the fact that appear in the visual side and um the refined information will be used for uh, answer prediction and um this part has been mentioned in the previous lecture so I will skip it for now. Um, all right. Uh, for the compositional reasoning, um, the question, the a natural question we, we have: Why do we care? Why why compositionality is so important for like visual reasoning and machine reasoning in general? Um, so the answer, the key answer is visual data and text data, which is the major um, modality that um, human use to you know, represent knowledge um, is compositional itself. Um, so because of that, we can apply the principle of compositionality uh, in which it says the meaning of complex expression is determined by the meaning of its constitutive expression and the rules used to combine them. Um, so, okay, in the 
in the context of visual question answering, let's say we have a a very clean uh, visual scene of like multiple objects like this, and we have a question: What color is the thing um, with the same size as a, the the uh, sign cleaner? And if we use a um, simple neural network which um, achieve relatively good performance on object recognition, let's say, it will um, give an answer like sign. So, what the thing, what, but the, the answer should be um, green in this case. So, why things go wrong? Um, so, the reason here is, you know, the network gets the most common color in the image, as we can see, um, sign the dominant uh, color appear in the image and um, the question will the question word here is what color implies that um, a color a color is is a, a, an answer for, for this type of question and um, the network should, should be biased by you know by linguistics um, and um, but the actual the actual failure here uh, for this type of um, problem is that um, this this question requires multi-step reasoning. Um, so as a human being, we first uh, find the the um, cyan cylinder and then we locate you know the object of the same size of the the cylinder and then um, we we determine its color, which is green in this case. Oh, sorry. Um, so, so, so that why we have to take um, compositionality into account. And um, this kind of question we deal a lot in in practice in in our daily life. Um, and 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 uh, there are a lot of following up works has been um, proposed to you know to address the problem of compositional. Uh, reasoning. Uh, the first one is magnet, um, which my colleagues he already uh, explained in the previous lecture, and also um, also um, this part like going from spatial reasoning to object centric reasoning. Um, my colleague Vung he also um, uh, mentioned about the importance of why why we need um, object representation. Um, of visual objects, so the the intuition is grid representation a a respect of the the five grand semantic um, of images. Um, it means that let's say the if you represent um, image as a, a set of scene and feature, um, it basically machine and human doesn't speak the same language. Human cannot understand in the pixel level uh, like machine do. Um, that's why uh, in reasoning, it's it's intuitive that we should move to object centric, uh, where human can understand and interpret interpret how machine do do reason, and it 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 helps in terms of interpretability, and we will trust machine decision more um, if it operate on on object instead of operate uh, instead of you know operating on a uh, pixel level as many other uh, works that based on CNN grid feature usually do all right um so for object centric um, approaches um, there also a live work um, relies on um, graph reasoning uh, also a very common um, method in, in solving um, VQI. Uh, so uh, the idea is to you know go to multiple um, step of reasoning. Let's say the first one is to um, identify a person to the left in the photo, and then the woman holding the uh, blue umbrella. Um, so so we use uh, the different pieces of the question uh, in the query um, to guide the reasoning process um, on the image which um, like we basically we grab different pieces of information on the query to the visual part to arrive at the, the answer so this is 
um, in the in the like this satisfy both requirement which um, we understand what behind what undergoing of the reasoning process um, so human will will um, will have a better chances about the machine uh, capability in reasoning all right um, I will skip this part as well as uh, my colleague already discussed about this um, this as well uh, okay and um, another line of work is using um, it to do reasoning as uh, query de de driven uh, program so basically what we do is like um, we think reasoning as a like laying out models to read an answer and um, so we we learn different uh, n different module uh, by neural network um, to to carry different parts of, of the query and we combine those models into a layout um, that can help machine to to read to the answer so each model here is a function uh, it translate you know from from um, the piece of information we have in the query to the um, the relevant information on the uh, visual pad to be able to answer the question um, and here is what the model learn so uh, basically we um, let's say we have a question let's just do the small cylinder that in front of the blah 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 so first we will have to identify the um, the small green thing uh, which is a cylinder which is a green cylinder here um, and we can see uh, other second um, training apples the machine relatively uh, did very well at identifying this object and then it do relocating to you know to identify um, the the reference uh, object from the first identifies object which is a red um, cylinder in this case and then um, we we do the filter uh, sorry um, and we do the comparison in this case we compare the material of uh, the green object and the the um, the red object basically and um, finally we use that comparison information to um, give an answer so this will have been done um, four years ago uh, but um, it's 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 still um, uh, one of the the best um, one of the clearest uh, method in in um, in uh, modern networks uh, live work and I will spend a bit more time to talk about the current trend in VQA in visual question answering before I move to your video question answering um, because I'm running out of time probably I have to split up uh, a bit so um, currently people are trying to uh, to do to focus on data augmentation uh, with counterfactual example and also um, try to solve visual question answering with like, less data by using self supervised learning by using um, question generation and also um, like try to address external knowledge um, in answering question uh, for the data augmentation part so um, if if machine when we train um, uh, machine when we train visual question answering algorithm um, on like under under independent and identical distribution assumption, it leads to like very poor generation on the uh, test set if the test set have like slightly different uh, distribution with the training training test uh, training set. Um, which uh, lead to an intuition that we can augment augment uh, capture factor sample to allow machine to you know understand the critical change in the input that lead to um, to to a change in the answer space let's say uh, in this particular example um, when we remove the boys from 
um, the image would lead to a completely diff uh, different um, uh, answer from the original question, how many people in the play? So the, the original image and the mutation image is relatively the same. Um, they both are realistic, uh, but uh, the minimal change in the, um, the visual part, which is the removal of, of the boy, will lead to a different in terms of answer. And similar to um, the below example, uh, where we change, um, the, the, we do the color inversion uh, to the object, uh, which lead to which lead to the different um, answer. So the point is, we try to make the the um, change the intervention in the visual part and also later in the language part minimum but lead to a completely change in the answer space. So that's the whole point. So we hope to cover a a um a like a wider range um of sample in the distribution. So hopefully machine can cover all the holes in the distribution uh, and it can generalize better in the test sets if uh, the test set have different uh, distribution uh, from the training set. Okay, um, another one is to generate more question um, to, you know, to cover all the possible question um, from a visual scene. So uh, pretty much, you know, question answering is a few shot learning problem or even zero shot learning problem where uh, given an image, we have a very spare, very spare um, number of questions that cover all the aspect in the image. Um, and question generation can be done with either um, survive and unsupervised learning. Um, I provide two, relative, uh, two representative work um, here for, for reference. Uh, so basically, um, question is you know, synthesized by um, the, informa the mutual information from the image and the answer. Um, we lead to the representation of question. And you know, the answer only reflect a very small piece of the information in, in the image. So hopefully by generating question, we can cover all the possible um, aspect in the image that lead to the, the answer. All right. And um, as similar to the NLP field, um, we also can treat visual question answering as a downstream task of you know, visual language, uh, but pre-trained model. And um, in the last couple of years, there are numerous pre-trained language, visual language model during um, like last three years, uh, trying to, to, to bring the advance of uh, NLP to the intersection between vision and language. Um, we can, we can um, list here like a lot of work uh, that with similar uh, name, uh, trying to address the same thing. And um, this work can be divided into two different um, type of architecture. One is a single stream model and two, two stream model in which um, the single stream model try to use a cross modality uh, transformer to, uh, you know, to model the, the interaction between um, objects, visual objects, because a a piece of information in the original image and also what's in um in 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 text uh, it can be like um image caption from image captioning it can be from uh visual question answering uh, so all sort of um language vision in, uh, language vision data can be used to to train um this kind of model and later we can treat visual question answering as a downstream task by just a simple fine tuning um, this model uh, with a customization of, of the answer decoder for visual question answering. And also learning with actual knowledge. Um, so the question is why actual knowledge for reasoning is important? Um, the answer is questions can be beyond visual recognition. Uh, let's say in, in this particular uh, question, uh, what sort of vehicle uses this item? So to be able to answer this question, we have to have the knowledge that this is a, a five um, a fire hydrant, and a fire trucks usually uh, use a fire hydrant um, to be able to answer this kind of question. 
So machine need to have access to that kind of information to be able to um, answer this type of question. And also, you know, there are many different type of questions that even um, requires human prior knowledge for cognition level reasoning. Let's say um, we have a visual scene like this, and the question is why the person one, um, which is the woman in the image, um, pointing on other person two, which is a man in the image. Um, and uh, based on the analyze the analysis of surrounding um, scene, we can you know um, um, we can answer that okay um, the because uh, she she um, robbing she robbing the bank and and um, the the man is the bank manager. It's not like um, she trying to kill. The, the women trying to kill the man for no reason. Um, so this all sort of thing um, need external knowledge to be answered. And um, most of the, the works in this lab work, they try to retrieve information from like open source, um, mostly from Wikipedia. So that's sort of API that allow um, more machine learning model to have access to the vast information available in Wikimedia, and they use that retrieve information to to support the answer for uh, question answering. Um, and yeah, that pretty much the um, the visual question answering part. Um, before I move to the last part of the uh, tutorial, um, do you have any eyes? Uh, do you have any question about the the uh, visual question answering part? And also the textual, uh, the textual question answering part. If if you have any question, um, feel free to to um, type on the chat, or you can ask me directly. I'm happy to take questions and discuss with you. Okay. Um, if not, I will move to the last part of the um, tutorial today, which is visual question a video question answering so um, again we recall to the learning to reason formulation um, that we have mentioned from very beginning of the talk um, so for the video question answering the input is now not a um, static image anymore it's a dynamic scene from a video which contain um, hundreds of, of images basically and the question the question is still in natural language form, and um, machine need to give an answer for the um, information it sees in the video and um, the required information in the question. Um, so, for example, in this case, uh, it shows that uh, two men are talking to each other, and then um, they they have fun with each other, and the guy with the hoodie run away. Um, so, machine have to understand all of that. Uh, that thing happen in the uh, the dynamic things, and uh, link all the event together to be able to um, arrive at the answer that um, that what is the boy with the hoodie do before um, running away. So in this case, the answer is flips the front side. So um, that's a very exciting task, but it's it's also very difficult at the same time. And how how machine can manage to um, to understand all sort of thing, which looks um, absolutely very complex. Okay, so the challenge in in the video question answering field is it's it very difficult in terms of data annotation because it's it requires vast amounts of um, human labor to you know identify to watch um, video and then come up with relevant uh, question and then provide answer for for training and also the content for performing reasoning spread over space time and um, and multiple modality which can be video subtitle speech if you think about the movie the movie um, um, situation so which create a, a uh, incredibly um, challenge for for a machine to deal with all sort of data and um, to let, let alone 
um, modeling the interaction between different pieces of information located in you know multiple modality like that um, which is um, very new to uh, machine learning researcher well um, so in the last couple of years there are multiple video question answering that this that has been introduced um, we go from movie question answering um, I mean which go from a simple short uh, short form video question answering for example MSR VTTQI MSR VT, um, VDQI and the most dominant the most uh, the largest that is set in the short term the short form video question answering TZIP QI and also other type of um, video question answering trying to address the complex scene happening in a, a snippet of movie in movie QI and also uh, now IT and TV QI data set. Um, Clever is another video question answering data set which resemble um, the uh, compositional um, visual reasoning data set that we were, met, we were talking in in the previous lecture um, which is Clever, Clever um, data set. Um, yeah, here's some visualization of the data set that I were talking about. So this is a two um, represent, representative tasks of the TZIP QA data set, which asks machine to identify what action um, has been carried on in a short period of time uh, in, a, in a given video. And also it's also asks um, machine to understand the transition between different events and action in a, a, a short uh, video. And for the Clever data set, it tried to address the interaction between objects uh, over time. And also it even um, asks machine to, to imagine what the result would look like um, if one event doesn't happen or one event happen which we usually refer to causal reasoning um, in practice okay um and for for the methods in uh, visual question answering um one of the straight um, one of the straightforward uh, approach in video question answering is think of it as a spatial a spatial temporal extension of image caption uh, i mean image question answering so all of the available um, methods in vi in visual question answering can be uh, applied to video question answering with some adaptation to you know to handle the um, dynamic scenes in video. So let's say um, the memory network approach that we have seen in both textual question answering and visual question answering can be used to collect the different piece of information. Um, given by fact of vi given by visual fact uh, can be which can be you know uh, represented by um, CNN feature for uh, frame wise uh, from, from, from different frames in the video or it can be like a flow feature given by um, 3, 3D um, convolution or neural network model um, to so memory network will iteratively correct um, relevant information based on the the driven of the question representation, and finally it it will use a collection of the the piece of information um, to decode the answer. Um, another simple extension of um, visual question answering to video question answering is um, normally uh, we would have a static image um, for the visual part and then we use a conversational neural network which we train on a large scale image data set which uh, is the image net um, to extract the, the um, feature of the, the image but in, in the video as we have a whole bunch of uh, video frames we use a sequential modeling model which is LSTM in this case um, to model the you know the temporal relationship happening in the video on top of the um, CNN feature uh, of all the video frames 
and and then um, together with the representation of the question um, to 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 serve as a knowledge base for you know the answer decoder to to get the, the answer for the question and another one is um, instead of using um, LSTM to to represent um, the sequential information in a um, video uh, we use um, attention um, to you know to sum up the the important parts of the video um, that relevant to the question um, to um, to be used by like a new network for for answer prediction and um, another one is to extend directly from sequence to sequence model in which it mimics the uh, human um, behavior when we're dealing with question answering. So first, uh, let's say as human, we look we we'll, when we answer a question, we will look at um, the video first to see what happened in the video, and then um, we um, we look at the question to see what part of the information we need to pay attention to in the video, and uh, finally we um, to we get to the answer. So this extension from sequence to sequence sequence we make exactly that process to happen in human being when answering question and also there are some more uh, sophisticated uh, pr approach in video question answering which um, try to deal with the spatial temporal information um, in the video so so for example in in this work um, what they do to use uh, different um, you know level of interpretation of the given question um, for example what level in this case and the whole question level um, to extract the relevant uh, piece of information in the video uh, basically the information in the video is given by different uh, frames in time um, so the what uh, level will try to you know um, to extract the relevant our uh, frame time frame for for what itself and and for the um, context information um, from the whole question um, that to you know to um, finally retrieve the information from a um, from from uh, I mean the um, information um, going in time to an LSTM um, to you know few or few information um, from question and uh, visual part together to decode uh, an answer all right and uh, another uh, common method that we have seen in both textual textual uh, question answering and visual question answering uh, I explained before uh, which is memory by um, video question answering so in this case the idea is to um, extract a set of uh, visual fact in the video uh, from both motion and appearance fact um, so they will use a very general dynamic um, memory network to receive uh, what facts in the set of a given fact is relevant to the question um, um, that can be used to you know decode the answer at the end so in in this work they they use two different dynamic memory networks in separation um, to extract the information from the set of motion fact and appearance fact um, for the answer. Uh, a follow a follow up work. <clears throat> they what they do is no they they use only single um, dynamic memory network um, lysis, but to combine piece of information from both. Um, mo set of motion fact and appearance fact together in in one half, in one half of the uh, memory network. Um, so by doing that iteratively, um, they will um, they will uh, find the piece of information from at least like a piece of information is a combination of you know um, appearance and motion at early state instead of the I mean the late uh, state as a previous work. All right, and also there's a lot, another line of work um, that um, this is actually our own work. Um, what we do is to um, design a multi-model reasoning units that can 
um, incorporate different um, modality. In this case, particularly, it is frame by appearance feature, motion feature, and the, the query um, feature in one single unit. And we, we are able to stack multiple units in time. I mean, multiple units in a hierarchical manner um, to, to you know, decode the relationship between uh, different events um, happen in, in a given um, uh, video in time to, to uh, decode to an answer. Um, another work of uh, our own group is to approach visual question answering as an object-oriented spatial temporal reasoning problem in which we treat the video as a set of, um, of object life that track to time. And um, similarly, we have a reasoning unit that operate that operates on the object sequence um, and in a hierarchical manner to, you know, extract the um, relationship between uh, object life um, and and finally decode to an answer from the interaction uh, of the objects in the in a given um, you know um, video. All right. Uh, Last but not least, there's another live work in video question answering, uh, which is visual question, uh, video question answering as a downstream task uh, of video language retraining. Um, there are a whole bunch of um, but like models that um, that try to uh, bring pre-trained model for videos and and language um, data. Uh, one of the representative work is video buzz that introduced by uh, Google, um, where they mainly do with um, with videos in in a kitchen setting. Uh, as um, they have a very detailed in um, instruction for all the step of the cooking, and um, the data for training is you know like the video of instruction a very detailed instruction of all the step of cooking and so an uh, associate um, text that um, that given by an um, automatic speech recognition toolkit and they use it to uh, modality to you know pre-train a big model um, by by uh, simply masking some part of uh, either uh, linguistic part and visual part, and um, the the purpose of the model is to reconstruct the mass part uh, in exactly the same manner with um, but in NLP field. And um, later on, um, video question answering or other similar tasks like video captioning or zero short action classification is treated as a downstream task by just a, a fine a, a simple fine tuning task on the pre-trained uh, video bed model. And there are some other work in, in, in this slide of research where they, they, they try to, you know, to do spare sampling of video in which they can, they can make use of large data set in image and text data, in, in large image and text data that are available uh, for free. Um, and by transferring knowledge in image text data to um, video text data, um, they managed to, you know, to train a, a, a large, um, a very powerful um, um, video language prediction model that achieves state of the art, um, you know, um, performance on the on video question answering, and. Um, the last one I want to quickly mention is if you think about the movie setting where, you know, it's a little bit different from the short form video question answering we're talking about uh, from the beginning of the talk, um, is the movie question answering focused more on the, the long term temporal relationship between different events and um, characters in a movie. And also the information is spread in different, um, different forms which is uh, in, in video form, in subtitle, and even in speech. So machine have to manage all of that uh, information and, you know, gather all information for, 
for um for answering the question. And there's here some conventional method for movie question answering, um, in which they normally uh, treat the movie questions answering um, as a multi-stream model, um, all driven by the question representation. And um, this field is relatively new, and um, there are not many works have been done um, on this field, and it's um, it's an open field for for people working on uh, machine reasoning, um, and um, I believe that it will be a very exciting um, line of research in in the next couple of years. And uh, this also the end of my talk today. Um, I will I will leave uh, one of like a couple of minutes for um, question answering and also for for Professor Chen Chen to recap the the entire uh, tutorial and so the take-home message for audience. Uh, thanks a lot for listening.